What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 woodworking tutorial for you. So in the last video we created some plans for our cabinet that we designed inside of Fusion 360. In today's video I wanted to talk you through a couple different ways that you could kind of adjust the way that your cabinet looks as well as how to create a parts list um, or a cut list from our model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so in the last video we talked about how to create some different drawings um, from our cabinet inside of Fusion 360. So you can see how we created like our overall view as well as we created another sheet where we only showed like a shelf um, and some detail on what that's going to look like. So I thought in this video we could talk through maybe how to create like an exploded view, possibly a view with the door open, and then also how to create a parts list from this drawing. And so if you remember, we set this up in a very specific way. And so the way that we set this up was we modeled out the different parts labeled differently um, just so that we could pick these up specifically in our schedule. So let's do that first. So what we want to do is we want to go into our drawings section. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new sheet. So I'm just going to do a quick add right here. And so remember how we broke everything up inside of this cabinet. So we broke this up and you can't see it here, but you can see it here. Um, and we modeled out our different pieces and we labeled them um, based on their sizes. And so there's a reason that I did this. And the reason that I did this is because now when we add a schedule, these names are going to come into our schedule. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to be on our new sheet and we can insert a table by going up to the table option. And so notice how you've got a few different options in here, but we specifically want to click on table. We want to move our mouse over here and we want to click. And so notice that when you do bring your table in, you can also adjust your reference. So if you do have multiple models in here or something like that, you can reference just one of them. Um, I, in this case, just want to reference the version one of this is all that I really need. So you just need to reference your model and then just single click in order to place this. And so we can take a look at a few different things in here. So the first is um, that if we look at this, you can see how what this does is this comes in here and this gives us a schedule of the parts that are in our model. And basically what it's scheduling is it's scheduling out the different pieces that we have in here. And one thing I want to note about this is this is rolling them up based on their label which is why we labeled them the way that we did. Um, there may be a different way to do this. If any of you guys know a different way to do this, let me know. But the reason that I label these with dimensions is that now these roll up um, into totals. So for example, if we look at this piece right here, you can see that there's three of these in here. So there's basically three items that have the same name in here. So it totals them up in this way. So um, our quarter inch um, by 29 inch long by one and a half inch, um, by one and a half inch wide sheet, we have two of those. And so it's rolling that up in here as well. Now, the one thing that's a little annoying to me is I wish that it wouldn't break this item out because it's a mirrored item. So we modeled that as a mirrored item, but because the title is different, it's not getting rolled up in here. And so you can see how this brings this in here, but because this is a mirror, it keeps the word mirror in here. I'm not 100% sure how to fix that when it rolls this up. Um, but you can see how we still get a fairly comprehensive parts list in here. One thing you might notice though is it's telling us that our material is steel. So the reason for that is because when we apply to material over here, we just apply to material um, for the appearance rather than the physical properties. So for me, unless you're really tied to that material column, what I would do is I would actually come in here and double click on this and I would just turn off the material column in here, you can actually turn off your description as well just by clicking on these. So notice that you can come in here and make that adjustment. We could go in and apply a physical material of wood to this, but I'm just going to turn off material and then click on close. So what that's given us is that's given us a parts list that's in here. Um, so you can fairly easily create those parts lists from your models um, just by being careful with the way that you label things when you do this. So now what I want to do is I want to talk through creating a couple different alternate views of our cabinet. So for example, what I want to do is I want to create a view where my cabinet door is open. Then I also want to create a view where I have kind of an exploded view of my cabinet. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the animations function um, in order to set this up. 
So the way that we're gonna do that is click the drop down, go into animation. And so what we wanna do is we wanna create an exploded view of our cabinet. And so there's a couple different ways that you could do this. Um, there is an auto explode function in here that you could try. So you could try selecting this and then clicking on the auto explode. What that does is that explodes everything outward, but you can see how it doesn't really give you a very good result. I don't really like this function, unfortunately. Um, it could be a lot better. For some reason, it just kind of like explodes everything out there randomly. And so really probably what we need to do is we just need to create a manual exploded view. And since we're not really interested in animating this we just want to create a view that we can then reference all we need to do is just start selecting the pieces that we want to move so I just did a shift click for all of those and then you can just use the transform components function in order to move them where you want them so for example I can move my trim out this way I can move my door right here I can move these pieces maybe back this way Notice how I'm just doing a shift click and I'm just using the move function. I can just kind of move everything wherever I want it to be. So I'm just gonna move this out, move this out so that you can see it. I'm gonna adjust my view right here and I'm gonna click on okay. So basically what we've done is we've created an exploded view of our cabinet. And so the way that we did that is we just set this up where these objects in here are just in the 3D space um, they've just been moved a little bit. And since we had our timeline cursor over the little um, the little box right here, the little curtain, um, basically what that means is that means that this isn't animating, this just starts with everything in that location. And so one thing you wanna make sure to do when you do this is you wanna go ahead and you wanna click on save. And so when we made this change, what we've done is we've updated our version of our cabinet. Well now we need to go into our cabinet drawings and notice how you get this little warning down here right here that says changes have been made to a reference design. What that means is that means that we've made changes and saved this and this is not referencing the newest version of that. So you can update that just by clicking the little chain right here. So right now, for example, I'm just gonna do this real quick. If we were to add a new base view and click in here, you can see how our version four doesn't show up on our reference list. So we can't reference the newest version of this. So we just need to click on the button right here to update so that we're referencing the newest version. So when you make a change over here, you just need to make sure that you update inside of your drawings. And so now that we've updated our reference, what we wanna do is we wanna add a new base view right here, we wanna click. So what you wanna do is you don't wanna look in the reference, you wanna look under your representation. Well, under representation, what's gonna happen is the views that we've created are going to show up under your representation. So this one, for example, I'm gonna set this to exploded view. So basically what this is doing is this is referencing that exploded view that we created in our animation right here. And again, you need to make sure that you've updated your reference um, once you've saved this to make sure that you're getting the newest information. But notice how I can move this around just like any other view. Um, and I'll have to click on OK first. You can adjust the scale. So if you wanted it to be a little bit bigger, you could do that. You can treat this just like any other view in that sense. So you can set this up where it's shaded or where it's got hidden edges if you want the hidden edges, um, kind of whatever you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. What that's done is that's added our exploded view to our sheet right here. And so let's create one more with the door open. So the way that I wanna do that, so I'm gonna go back to my cabinet and we're gonna create a new view by clicking the little plus button right here. And we want to select clean. So we wanna make sure that this is a completely clean, completely new version of this cabinet. So now we have a second view. And I'm gonna go ahead and label this open door in my storyboards down here. Then all I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just gonna select these items so I'm gonna select everything that makes up my door. Then I'm just gonna use the transform tools in order to rotate this. And so we have this selected, but the problem is if we try to rotate it right now, it's not in a very good place. So what we wanna do is we want to select all of these items. We're gonna use the transform function, but we wanna start by setting our pivot. So when we set our pivot, what that means is we can set the point where this little gizmo starts. So I'm gonna move my mouse over this corner right here and I'm going to click. And so what I've done is I've set this as kind of my base pivot point. And then you can click on the button for done in order to place this. Well now this is in place and you can rotate your door so that your cabinet's open just like this. So you can see how I was able to rotate this 
And I'm gonna go ahead and set my view so that I can see this. I'm gonna click on OK. So when I click on OK, what I've done is I've basically created an animation, but I've created an animation where this finishes with my door open. And so this is what I want. I want my door to be open for my view. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna save this again. And we're gonna go ahead and just click on OK in order to save our cabinet. Then we're gonna go back into our drawings. And notice again, you get the same warning as you got before, where it's telling us that changes have been made to the reference design. So we just wanna click on this button right here to make sure that we're referencing the proper version or the most up-to-date version. So now I'm just gonna add this as a base view on this page. I'll go ahead and click right here in order to place it. And then for this one, I wanna reference the open door function. So you can see how I can adjust this so that I'm getting my open door view on this sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the scale to a 10th. We'll go ahead and set it to shaded and we'll click on OK. Now let's move it down just a little bit so that it's not intersecting with this table. And we might need to move the table a little bit as well. So not really a super huge deal. I'm just gonna move the table right here. And so you can see how you can use this to basically create any kind of view that you want from your model. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, is there any other kind of view you'd like to learn how to create or any kind of plan? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.